Alrighty, so today's lesson is basically a review. We did this at the very beginning of the year. So we are going to talk about the rules for integer operations. So the reason these rules are important is because we use all of the rules for integer operations for rational numbers. So remember that an integer is a signed number, but rational numbers are decimals and fractions. So once you learn the rules for integers, you can apply those to rational numbers. So let's discuss the rules. The first one has to do with adding integers. We learned that if the signs are the same, we add the numbers and we keep the sign. So when we're adding integers, if the signs are the same, we add the numbers and keep the sign. So our examples, negative four plus a negative five, that's an addition problem. The signs are the same, so I'm gonna add the numbers. Four plus five is nine, and I'm going to keep the sign negative. When I look at the second example, I have a six and a nine addition. The signs are the same. There's actually no sign in front of them. That means that they're positive. Six plus nine is 15. When I look at the next example, I want to circle the numbers. Remember that a number includes the sign in front of it. So I have negative eight, negative seven, and negative five. Are all three signs the same? Yes. So this is a same sign add and keep. So I'm going to add 8 plus 7 is 15 plus 5 is 20. Keep the sign. So my answer is negative 20. When I look at my next example, oh, that's it for this. So now let's talk about if the signs are different. Still adding integers, but if the signs are different, we subtract signs the same or are they different? They're different. So I'm going to subtract. 8 minus 6 is 2. Keep the sign of the bigger number. Well, 8 is the larger number and it's positive. So my answer is positive 2. My next example, positive 5, negative 18. The signs are different. So I'm going to subtract. 18 minus 5 is 13. However, I see that the larger number is negative, so my answer is negative 13. <clears throat> this last example, I have to use two different rules. I'm going to circle all of the numbers. Here we go. Signs are the same. Same signs, add and keep. Negative 6 and negative 12. So when I add them together, 6 plus 12 is 18. Keep the sign. And then I have to bring down this positive 8. I'm going to circle them again so you can see what's going on. I have a negative 18 and a positive 8. Are the signs the same or are they different? Different signs. So I'm going to subtract 18 minus 8 is 10. Keep the sign of the bigger number. You'll notice that negative 18 is the larger number. So my final answer is negative 10. Alrighty, so that's for adding integers. We also talked about subtracting integers. Um, when you subtract integers, you can keep the sign of the first number, change subtraction to addition, so I can keep the sign of the first number, change the subtraction sign to addition, and add the opposite. And that's the rule keep change, change. However, I think that's very confusing. That's why I taught you guys instead to just circle the two numbers. I have a positive 5 and I have a negative 11. Are the signs the same or are they different? They are different signs, so I'm going to subtract. 11 take away 5 is 6. Keep the sign of the bigger number, so it would be negative 6. But the one thing that we did learn, which I think is very important, is that when you have two negatives together, I want you guys to always turn that into a giant plus sign. So really this is negative five 
plus 8, and then I'm going to circle the numbers. I have a negative 5 and a positive 8. Are the signs the same or are they different? They are different, so that's really a subtraction problem. 8 minus 5 is 3. Keep the sign of the bigger number. My answer is positive 3. All right. So that's adding and subtracting. Then we learned about multiplying and dividing two numbers. We know that the signs are the same. The answer is positive. We also know that when we're multiplying and dividing two numbers, that if the sign is different, the answer is negative. So are the signs the same? Yes. 5 times 6 is 30 and it's positive. A negative times a negative is a positive. Are the signs the same? Yes. 12 divided by 4 is 3. A negative divided by a negative is a positive. When the signs are different, my answer is negative. I have a positive 8 times a negative 6. The signs are different. 8 times 6 is 48. Make my answer negative. Positive 16, negative 4. The signs are different. 16 divided by 4 is 4. Make sure my answer is negative. We also learned what to do when we were multiplying or dividing three or more numbers because you're not always just dealing with two numbers. So what we learn is that we can count the number of negatives. I have one, two, three, four negatives. Four is an even number. That means that my answer is going to be positive. So now I'm just going to multiply as normal. Five times six is 30. Four times two is eight times 1 doesn't change the value. 30 times 8 is 240. When I look at my next example, I see that the number of negatives that I have is odd. I have 1, 2, 3 negatives. 3 is an odd number. That means that my answer is going to be negative. 5 times 6 is 30 times 3 all over 2. I just need to remember that my final answer is negative. 30 times 3 is 90 divided by 2. 90 divided by 2 is 45. And what do I know? My final answer is negative. And basically, those are the rules for multiplying, dividing, or adding and subtracting integers, which applies to what? all rational numbers. So let's practice what we've learned. all the same. Yes, these are the same signs. Add and subtract. 4 plus 10 is 14, plus 2 more is 16. Keep the sign. Let's look at our next example. I have negative 5 and negative 4. Are the signs the same? No, they're different. 5 minus 4 is 1. The signs are very much the same.
They're the same, so that means same signs. My answer is going to be positive. 4 times 2 is 8. A negative times a negative is a positive. Count the number of negatives. How many negatives do I have? Three negatives. That's an odd number. That means my answer is going to be negative. What is 1 times 4? Four? 4. What is 3 times 2? What is 4 times 6? 24. Don't forget to make your answer negative. Okay, last example. Count the number of negatives. I have 1, 2, 3 negatives. 3 is an odd number. So that means my final answer is going to be negative. 4 times 3 is 12. 7 divided by 6. Notice that I'm ignoring the negatives. I'm just And basically, that's it. So I want you to use these rules when you're working through your homework. And don't forget, we have a gym kit tournament today. Um, I'm doing those at 12, 2, and 3. Top five scorers will receive a prize. Good luck.